Uh, I'm Elle. And I'm Kate. And this is the first episode of Bookish Miss. So first, I'm really glad to see that your jaundice has cleared up. Me too. I'm really feeling a lot better. Um, yeah, I think we're both looking healthier. Uh-huh. Less happier. Hella. Yes. I'm glad. Yes. So what's this blog about today? What's this blog about? Um, basically, we're going to talk about some books by category. Here's the thing. We didn't actually talk about books a whole lot in our prologue. So now we're going to talk about that stuff. The stuff that we were talking about. We're talking things. about. Right. 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 So we made up like a little list of books by, you know, like our favorite stuff and some of our least favorite stuff. Yeah, and hopefully you, know, you get a glimpse of some of the stuff we dig. And maybe you'll like find, hear of a book on here that you've never heard of before. This isn't a top 10 list or, I mean, is it even 10? I don't know. I didn't it's do the math. Okay, 10-ish. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a 10-ish, it's a book of 10, it's a, a totally biased, unsorted list of 10-ish books. Yes! Anyway, first of all, if you don't know anything about Bookish Mist, please check out our prologue episode 0.5. That'll give you a good sense of where we're coming from and why we're talking to a camera right now. Please leave comments and yes. uh, tell us what you, why you agree or disagree. We would love that. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so off we go. Best line in a book, and it's in the book A Sweet Far Thing by Liba Bray. This is from, ooh, grab it from the shelf. Yay! The first book in this series is A Great and Terrible Beauty. Um, I point this out. It's fantastic. It's very good. Um, note the length of that book compared to the length of the third one in the series. It goes, Our mouths and bodies speak for us in a new language as the trees shake loose a rain of petals that stick to our slickness like skins we will wear forever. I'm sorry. Stick to our slickness like skins we will wear forever? I pretty much died. I will also say I've never cried harder than when I finished this book. Best line. Love it. We dare you to find one that's better. Dare you. Please and do. And don't pull out Shakespeare. No, no, it no. It doesn't count. No, in modern, modern literature. Best sense of style. Goes to Solace by Gail Carriger. Well, so first off, I'll start this by saying, Kate and I have a thing for steampunk. You'll probably see about that later. That said, this was everything that I wanted a steampunk novel to be, but had never been able to find. Gail Carriger is an actual archaeologist, so she's just an expert at um, research. So her exhaustive research lends itself to this just being effortlessly seamless. And it's right. Each mm -hmm. book is a style steal of a particular classical genre. So there is a mystery element to one of the books, um, a strong adventure story uh, told in one of the books, and it's uh, just a fantastic yeah. glimpse into different literary styles. And look at the cover. God, that's awesome. So, um, also just a side note, we met Gail Carriger. Um, she was really neat at Steamcon, and then she signed our books. It was awesome. It's really exciting. Most pretentious book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, there is no way that I've read Ulysses. I, I will not read Ulysses. I mean, I guess I shouldn't never say never, but I'm never gonna read Ulysses. Kudos to you if you have read this this book. I um, respect you. The most pretentious book I've ever read is that one. This one. Uh, it's actually Flatland, a romance of many dimensions. The premise of it is that there is a square living in the second dimension, so everything is flat, hence called Flatland. Um, I'm sorry. Like an actual square? It's a square. It's a square. Okay. It was written in 1884, and it's essentially a satire of uh, Victorian social structures, um, but explained through geometry. For all intents and purposes, this should not be an enjoyable book. But because he's t turned it into a social story, it's actually very compelling. And come on, it's really short. It's not that bad. Favorite classic. We've given this disclaimer a lot, and I'm going to keep giving it to you because it's really important. This is just my biased opinion. I'm not a huge fan of, you know, classic American literature, but I will say I'm a huge Austen fan. It really doesn't matter which Austen book it is. I adore it all. 
though I probably have a special place in my heart for Pride and Prejudice. Colin Firth makes me happy. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about Austin that you don't see, aside from, let's say, Shakespeare, is the wealth and breadth of adaptations that have been made of her books. People feel the freedom to take the bones of these great stories and work them in really new and imaginative ways. One of the most fun conversations I've ever had is when my husband and I discuss Pride and Prejudice, except I had read Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, and he read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And he hadn't read the original one? No. Hilarious. This next category is a tough one. Best book cover. I'm not... Okay, I'm not saying this is the best book cover, but this... most of them are... they're really bad. <laughs> Teenage we'll girl later. looking angsty halfway on the page. <laughs> yeah, not looking directly at the camera. This book cover made me buy a book without even reading the synopsis. I didn't really care who wrote it or what it was about. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. Look how sexy that book cover is. That whole thing you can't judge a book by its cover. A great cover won't make you read a book, but it might make you buy it. So speaking of um, covers, yes. making you buy or not buy a book, can we talk about the Sharing Knife series right now? <laughs> yeah, we probably should. <laughs> like the covers? were so misleading that people thought I was reading like a Fabio romance novel. Look at them. Do you see that? Other than the fact that there are trees in this world, there is nothing <laughs> similar <laughs> between the cover. Nothing and the cover <laughs> represents the book. Also, what's funny about them, after seeing the book covers, I thought they were from like the 80s. I actually thought they were. Yeah, no, they um, not? I haven't looked them up. I think the first one was published in 2006. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the covers also look like they're from 1980. Yeah. Oh, God, it's weird. The they're, books are so cool. Okay, so that's the thing. The, please read these books. The Sharing Knife series. I hear almost nobody talking about it. Yeah, very good, very innovative world building. You like these characters and you just get sucked in. I, oh, I just want to be part of them. And they kind of become part of you. Hi, everyone. This is Kate from Bookish Miss. So, uh, I am burning the midnight oil editing our latest episode, and it's getting really long. We are in no way close to done with our tennis list, so I think this means I'm going to have to break it apart into two episodes. So, I'm really sorry, but that means that you have a whole nother episode full of content talking about some great books and maybe some not so great books. Uh, so, please look out for episode two. It'll be coming soon right on the heels of this one. Uh, can't wait to see you there. Bye.